Hey, Chris Estes here in the village of Tricot, four hours north of the Port-au-Prince Airport in Haiti. I'm with a good friend now of mine, Daniel T. He's the leader, he's the director of Starfish Ministries inside of the village of Tricot, now leading thousands of people uh, to a better way, uh, to a better place, to a better life. And Daniel, I appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, to share with every everyone, all of our audience, all of our listeners, all of our viewers. You have such a great story. This is a guy uh, with perseverance, a guy with persistence, a guy who got na- knocked down, uh, but he knew that if he could look up, he could get up, and that's what he kept doing. He kept getting up. He kept going after it, and he's made it in a big way. Daniel, maybe you can share with our viewers your story, you know, how long have you lived in Haiti? Are you from Haiti? And then you're you're the leader now, you're the director now, but I know you had humble beginnings. It wasn't always as easy uh, as it maybe appears for people to see you now. Maybe you can talk about some of those early days of your life. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, it's good to be here and be talking about all of this. Uh, well, I was born here and I grew up here. Uh, I've been living for 34 years. When I was growing up, uh, you know, things were always, always tough. But in all of this, I have seen uh, God's hands because I was able to, uh, to make it. And the, the best thing I like about uh, making it um, is that although you may be going through difficult times, but when you make it, uh, those difficult times won't be written on your face and people won't know all those roles that you have been on. Um, but I thank God that, uh, that I was able to make it. Um, the beginnings were very humble, of course. Um, we didn't have uh, running water in our homes and it was a two-room house made uh, with, uh, with mud walls and stuff like that. And we were four kids um, in the family, so um, we, we didn't have a, a bed, we just uh, found whatever we could to sleep on. And, and of course there were many other families like that, but today where I'm at, um, it's through hard work and through perseverance that uh, I, I was able to, uh, to make it thus far. And I continue to, uh, to be a hard worker and uh, uh, an enthusiastic learner because uh, when you live, you have to continue to learn. One of the things I like so much about DT is he has a contagious smile, as you can see. Uh, And as I've always said, excitement is caught, not taught. You can catch it, you can't teach it. And one of the things that's been very obvious over the, the few days I've been here in this village is people catch the excitement. They catch the vision of DT and his leadership, and I'm just excited to pour into him. But... DT, maybe you can share with everyone a couple of those uh, moments of, of struggle or, or adversity, like walking to school, like the living on one Haitian dollar for a week as you were uh, in your teenage years. Maybe you could share, expand on that. Thank you very much. Um, when I was going to school, um, I remember that my parents never had enough money to pay tuition. And tuition was about uh, one and a half dollar U.S., which is uh, about 20 Haitian dollars, um, but it was always a struggle. So my mom had to really save uh, little she uh, she could find to make up for the tuition. And of course, my parent, uh, my dad was just uh, a farmer, and here in Haiti, the, in the farms, uh, the farmers don't produce too much because everybody pretty much is waiting on the rain, and when it doesn't rain, uh, the crops don't produce as they should so really it took my mother's efforts to as a retailer to buy stuff and try to resell them and to be able to feed us and uh, and pay for our school and I remember that one week um, when I was going to school and all my mother could find to give me uh, to live on was one dollar what 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 that meant was I was uh, spending one good every day which is uh, about 20 cents a day uh, to be able to make it. So those days were very, very tough, but they taught me many, many lessons. They taught me how to, uh, to pers- persevere. They taught me how to be courageous. They taught me uh, to, to keep the focus, you know, to keep steady, because I had to make a choice. I knew that if I, if I didn't uh, continue to study and stay in school, 
and do the best that I could, then I, I, I probably would have um, lived my life, all my life, uh, in this situation. But I was able to turn things around uh, through perseverance, through hard work. Uh, it wasn't easy uh, when I was going to school because I had to walk uh, for two and a half hours both ways. Um, and a lot of my counterparts didn't want to do that because they thought it was uh, too difficult. But I, I kept at it. And uh, when uh, people refused to study, I was studying. Um, I, I always believed in education. And uh, because of that, I, I was able to uh, graduate from school and move on to college. And here I am today um, making it. Um, and of course, I'm very uh, grateful to, to the Lord who saved me and who had allowed me to, uh, to come this far. DT could have easily allowed the adversity to become his tombstone, his death. But he instead made it his stepping stone, and he did persevere. And you know, one of the things I love about what I'm learning about you, DT, is your courage. And courage isn't the absence of fear, folks. It's acting in the face of fear. It's being afraid of something and doing it anyway. And that's what DT did. One Haitian dollar. What does that equate to in the States? What's, what's one, one Haitian dollar? One Haitian dollar is about, uh, it's about 50, 50 cents, actually. Okay, about, so about 50 cents for the week had to be tough on you, walking two and a half hours one way to school every day for, what was it, four years? Yes. Four years that he did that, day in, day out, every day. And what, what were the people around you, DT? What were they doing? Your friends, the, you know, the people that you maybe hung out with after school, what, what were they doing? Well, I used to go uh, to school with, uh, with two friends of mine. One was my brother and one was, was my cousin. But uh, halfway through the year, the first year, um, when they decided that things were uh, too tough for them, they, uh, they moved to Port-au-Prince, um, leaving me alone on the road. So um, I, I used to go to school in the afternoon. Um, the school started at 1 and it would end at 6. Uh, so when I was coming back from school, it was always dark with no flashlight and on foot. <laughs> so that, that was very difficult. Um, but though my friend uh, decided to quit, I decided that I was going to keep going. Because you make choices in life every day. You have to make a choice. You don't just sit there and wait for things to happen, but you have to make a decision. So when my friends decided to quit, I decided to keep on going and today I'm, I keep on walking uh, because I have a vision I know where I'm supposed to go and I know I'm not gonna get there if I just uh, stay on the road and just uh, watch people passing by. You know DT we have a saying that by the mile it's a trial by the yard it's hard but by the inch it's a cinch you know DT you talked about the choices that you make and, and taking those steps and I've said it many times, the choices you make, make you, and every day when we wake up, we can decide to be a winner or a whiner. We can look at our, our cup as half filled or half spilled. We can become better or we can become bitter, and you've decided to take the positive road on all of that, to make things happen, not let things happen, and I'm just so proud of you. You know, there was a devastating event that happened here several years ago with the earthquake, and you know, so many, so many people lost their lives, and I know someone of significance uh, to you uh, was was caught up in that tragedy. I know that had to be tough and you could have easily thrown in the towel and said, you know, I faced so much adversity in my life, I'm done, I quit, I'm, I'm giving up, but you, you allowed that to be a stepping stone for you. Share with everyone uh, what that was about. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, when the earthquake happened, I didn't really know what was going on until um, you know, after five minutes or so, when I uh, when I went out, I actually was uh, uh, doing some report cards uh, in a building that had uh, two stories on, on top of me. So if that building uh, came down, I wouldn't be here today. But uh, the Lord protected me. So when I went out, is when I realized what had happened, and I remember that I saw a kid uh, that was bleeding so bad. I took that kid put him in my car and I was rushing him to the hospital not knowing what had happened uh, and that, that kid actually uh, ended up dying in my, in my 
car. Uh, so afterwards, that's when I decided to go downtown, which is uh, uh, by the, uh, the area where uh, the palace is located. Uh, that's where my, my girlfriend at the time was going to school. She was studying to be a nurse. And when, when I got there, when I looked at the building, then I instantly knew what, uh, what had happened. I knew that it was going to be a very difficult um, situation. Uh, I knew it was going to be uh, difficult to get out of that building the way that it looked. Because it really looked like a sandwich. It just came down on, on, the, on the girls. Um, so she, she died there. I tried to save her, but you know, it was too late. Um, but still today, um, her, her mom and I, we, we are still good friends because we really had to be there for each other when, when that happened. Um, but I was able to, uh, to move away from the effects of that. Now, it doesn't mean that it was easy because when you have somebody uh, so close to you that passed away in such a tragedy, then um, it takes time. It's, it takes time to cope with it. It takes time to, I would say, accept it and, and live with it. It doesn't mean that I forget what had happened, but uh, I was able to, to move uh, from that. And now I'm married uh, and have, uh, I have one boy and I have a girl coming up. Congratulations to you, DT. That's awesome. Again, we should all be striving to be more like DT and overcoming the adversities in our life. It's not easy to do, uh, but DT decided, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to make it anyway. I'm going to make it in spite of all these challenges that, I, that I'm being faced with. And uh, that, that says something about who you are, DT, and why you're leading such a great group of people here in, the, in this village. Now, you speak English incredibly well. How many languages do you know? I speak uh, three languages. Um, I speak the I, I speak Creole, which is the native language, and then because we were colonized by French, uh, by France, then uh, French has become one of the official languages of Haiti, and I speak French, um, and I speak English, so I speak three languages. So I guess I should be saying bonsoir right now, right? Good afternoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was good. Now, right now, now, how, now, how long did it take you to learn English in a way in which we could communicate? Well, I didn't go to school uh, to learn English. I actually had the benefit of um, listening to missionaries um, that, that uh, used to come to this village. Um, actually, they missionaries have been coming here for for over 20 years. Uh, so I was able to just uh, pick it up from them and read from books and study a little bit and then, uh, and then you know, I was able to speak it. I don't know how it all happened, but uh, it's just something that I guess I have. Yeah, well, I think it happened every day over time, <laughs> uh, that slight edge, that compound effect. Now, now tell everybody, what are some things that you do listen to or that you watch or that you read from a development standpoint you know you and I talked about the mindset yes. uh, of people yesterday on our ride here and uh, I just loved the fact that you're a learner yes. uh, and that you're a reader and we always say leaders are readers and learners are earners and you know that's why you've been so successful maybe share with everyone some of the things that, that you're doing what I do on a daily basis um, I have the job that I'm supposed to focus on, but I still find enough time uh, to read a book, to read the Bible especially. Um, I sing on a daily basis. I, I play the guitar whenever I have time. You are the treasure that I see. You are my only love. Uh, but right now I'm studying how to, uh, to develop uh, people, how to uh, be a people person. I, I've just read the book by uh, Dr. John C. Maxwell. Uh, it was good stuff. And I have just started a new book. Um, recently I read the book of Nehemiah in the Bible, so I keep reading because uh, you have to get insights from um, all different uh, books and the most incredible author um, of all ages, uh, the God who created the universe. That is exceptional. And one of the things I love about DT is he knows a lot. 
but he also knows it's what you learn after you know it all that counts and your continual learning. Now, any of you who are listening right now, you're being inspired and, and you're just feeling led to bless other people and you'd like to participate in, in Starfish Ministries in some form or fashion, would encourage you to visit our website at, at starfishministries.org. Check it out and if you feel led, uh, would certainly appreciate uh, anything that you can do. We want to encourage you this week to pay the price. You know, Daniel, you paid a big price early in your life. You've continued to pay a price. Folks, you can pay now and play later, or you can play now and pay later. Daniel T. here chose to pay the price. That's allowed him to lead thousands of people to a better life. As we close this interview up, and appreciate your time, DT, a lot of things going on in the village. You're being pulled one direction and, and the other. You know, what, what's the goal moving forward for you? What's the goal for Starfish Ministries? What's the goal for the village here at, at Tree Kai? Uh, what, what we are actually involved in is uh, helping students uh, be better academically. Uh, we have some schools that we support. We have some of our own. Our own. We feed a lot of uh, students uh, um, five days a week. We have an orphanage that, uh, where we take care of kids help them better their lives. Uh, we help a lot of uh, old folks uh, when, when they can't uh, find uh, enough money to live on or enough food to live on. We help them out. Um, right now we, we're in the process of, uh, of uh, starting to operate a clinic and uh, it's an exciting project because if you can help people with their health, um, you, need, uh, you need health. Uh, to, uh, to continue to do what you do uh, every day and sometimes you cannot prevent the sickness uh, from hitting us but when they do we need to know that there's a place where we can find help with our health. So it's an exciting uh, project that uh, we are just starting on. Um, and then I, I need more education I guess because uh, <laughs> they say that uh, you know, the, the last time you, you study is when you die. And I'm not dead, I'm still alive, so I'm going to continue to study. Folks, great wisdom with the leader, with the director here at Starfish Ministries in the village of, of Tree Kata. You're not working in the clinic though, right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. And, and I just want to encourage all of you to, to focus on being a blessing. Re receive the blessings that, that you get, but focus on paying it forward. Be a blessing like DT. Uh, is being here with with so many lives and of course we will end this with with the get your hopes up get your hopes up this week get your hopes up this month and get your hopes up for 2015 thank you all for your time